If you saw this guy on Penn and Teller, you're going to want to know the method for the trick. So, Josh, please finally tell us how you fooled. Oh, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I was doing a show a while ago now, and I'm in the middle of a trick for uh, quite a lot of people. And this guy says to me, hey, when you're done, can you do a trick for this guy? And I thought, in that moment, what a weird thing to say because magic is for everybody. Like, the tricks I'm doing work for everybody. And he said, no, 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 you don't understand. This gentleman's blind. And at that moment, I just thought, wow, this truly is something I've never experienced before because how do you show magic to somebody you can't see? Like, it's impossible. Everything we do is visual. If I were going to fool him, I would have to fool his mind. So that's what I'm going to try to do now, is something totally different that you've seen before. I want to try to fool not only his mind, but the minds of all of you at home. So for our little experiment, Andy, we're going to pretend you can't see. If you couldn't see, I wouldn't be able to say to you, pick a card, because you wouldn't be able to see which one you picked. And even if I said, here, take the deck, take out any one you want after you shuffle, you wouldn't be able to see which one you got, so it wouldn't work. So I have a solution for it. Are you right or left-handed? Uh, left-handed. So hold out your right hand and put your other hand on top. In a moment, not yet, I want you to think of a card. But I want you to do it like this. First, think of the number. Do you have the value in mind? Mm -hmm. And now I want you to think of the suit. Do you have a suit? Yep. So you have a suit and a number. When you put them together, you have a card. And it's a card only you could know because it's in your head, correct? Correct. But this doesn't work because I said I would try and fool all of your minds at home. We got a problem. If you say the card, you'll accuse me of listening. Even if you whisper, you'll say I got somebody in the studio telling me the card. So I have the perfect way for Andy to code the card to all of you at home without me knowing. And here's how it works. I'll take away my power of sight for the rest of the trick. And when I do, I want to get a nice zoom on Andy's hands right in this area. And Andy, I want you as quietly as you can, because I don't want to be accused of listening. I want you to deal the value of your card. So if you thought of three, you'd just go like this one. Deal them face down into a pile, and then to destroy the evidence at the end, put the deck on top. Okay. Tell me when you're done. I'm done. That was the loudest quiet deal anybody has ever done. I was trying to make it good for the camera. Oh, okay, good. Um, so now everybody, all of you at home, know the value of the card he's thinking of. You never had to take it out of the deck, you never had to say anything, but you need to know the suit. So I'll turn away again, I'm blindfolded. Andy, pick up the deck. If you're thinking of clubs, deal one card face down, put the deck on top. If you're thinking of hearts, deal two cards, one by one, face down, deck on top. Spades would be three, diamonds four. Tell me when you're done. Okay, I'm done. Yeah? Yeah. I love this. This is one of my favorite moments in my entire show because all of you at home, all of you here in this room, Andy, everybody except me, knows the card he's thinking of. Do you have the deck? Yep. Put it here? Great. But the question is, how can I find a card for someone's mind? And the answer is, I'll do it by feel. I'll try and feel for the one you picked. Andy, you didn't uh, leave, did you? You're still here on camera? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, good. I considered it. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I feel something right here at this moment. I want you to be honest. Did you by any chance pick the two of clubs? I did. Is this card by any chance the two of clubs? It is, yes. But you see, I promised I would fool your mind, not your eyes. This is for the eyes. But you see, this is for the mind. There are no other cards in this deck. Absolutely no other cards. Please take a look. Make sure these really are completely blank. You can take a look. Make sure they don't come apart. And it's out of sight. Boom. It's great. All right. G'day champion, how are you? Welcome back to Zac Efron's favorite part of the internet, Saturday Sorcery. How are you on this absolutely beautiful Saturday? I hope you're having an incredible day doing whatever you're doing and you're about to learn an awesome effect from Joshua J. Not the one you just saw, that is called Out of Sight, but you can learn this from Joshua J's At The Table lecture. 
More on that in just a second. Now, before we get into what you're going to learn today, I do want to tell you about this week's giveaway. If you want a chance to win the Magician Fooler Bundle, stick around to later on in the episode where I show you how to enter that giveaway. Now on to what you're going to learn today. You're going to learn Signs by Joshua J. But first, you need to see a performance. So Joshua, over to you. Uh, I want you to cut the deck in half. And you're gonna do this on yourself. You're gonna do a card trick on yourself. So you're gonna choose either half, this one or this one. Whatever you choose, that's the half we use. So it's totally up to you. Go ahead. Like this one? Take it. Now, because we're here with the camera, I want you to go beneath the table so that you don't think I'm looking at marks. And you're gonna look at these cards in a second anyway, so you know they're not marked and stuff. But you're gonna do a card trick on yourself like this. Spread the cards out beneath the table. Okay. Take out any one that you like, but don't look at it. Okay. You got one? Yep. Sit on that card. Actually, just sit on it. Yeah? And now mix the cards again. Just mix them up beneath the table, kind of smush them together, give them cuts, shuffles. Yeah? Yeah. All right, now, keep them beneath the table. This is gonna be interesting. It's gonna get a little awkward uh, here in the studio with what I'm about to do, uh, but at home, your job is to make sure my eyes stay on his eyes. The reason being, some people think the cards are marked. And as I said, of course they're not, and you'll see that they're not in a moment, but it's important that I look at you. So place the cards face down on my hand. I'm scared already. All right, it's gonna be fine, Andy. Okay. You shuffled these, yeah? Yes. I'm gonna look at you, but I'm gonna deal through these cards in the hopes that one of these cards, two of these cards, maybe three of these cards will tell me something, maybe this one, no, about the card you picked. Okay, this one's telling me something. Hold on to it, don't look. <clears throat> this one's telling me something. This one's telling me something. So we'll just use those three. Now, this first one tells me something about the value. This one tells me something about the suit. And this one tells me something about the color. My friends at home, it's go time. Red card. Diamond. Queen. The cards are telling me that you chose the queen of diamonds. You had a free choice of where you cut. You had a free choice of how you shuffled. You had a free choice of the card you took out of the deck and then you shuffled again. My eyes were on you the whole time. Reach under your body, take that card, show it around. The queen of diamonds. All right. Wow. And you're gonna teach that? I am not gonna teach that. Well, I'm fooled. No, uh, I am gonna teach that. In fact, I will teach it now. I'm starting with this trick and I'm really not wild about tipping it at all because I think that the first lesson um, that maybe we can take from this live lecture is that when it comes to method, the direct method is always the best. And sometimes we get so invested in having elegant methods that we lose sight of the most important thing, which is how it would look. So if you're at home right now, knowing what you know about my work, I bet you're thinking what I would be thinking, which is it could be interlocking chains, but I didn't specify with how he shuffled beneath the table. It couldn't be marked cards because he did the whole thing beneath the table. It could be perhaps a gaff deck, but it's not some kind of like, you know, thin cards or whatever. Here's the method of the trick. Have you seen last week's free tutorial yet? Make sure you do card on screen right now or the link is in the description. Make sure you check it out. It's an absolute feast for the eyes and it's completely free. Go treat yourself. Now I'm so sorry, Josh. I need to interrupt for just a second for the mid episode giveaway. But before we get into this week's giveaway, we need to find out who won last episode bundle. So drum roll, please. Congratulations, my friend. You're the winner of last episode's bundle. So if you can email me just here, I'll get that prize out to you quicker. You can say, hey Bo, I've liked the video and I've also subscribed because it'll bring a big smile to your absolutely rugged beard. My beard has a smile. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much, my friend. Now onto this week's giveaway. If you want a chance to win the Magician Fooler bundle, all you need to do is comment below what is your favorite Joshua J release. Whatever it is, let me know in the comment section below. I'll then choose someone out at random and you'll be announced in next episode's video. So good luck. 
All right, champion, ready to check out more videos just like this one? Make sure you check out our YouTube channel where we drop new videos every single day. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe because why not? Save yourself coming back later. Now here's what's sad. What's really sad is, I bet you of the roughly six million people watching this uh, lecture right now, that five million or so are going to totally be turned off by this method and they're going to think, oh, well, I mean, it's a good trick and it's something I would do, but now I got to carry a separate deck to do just that trick. Yeah, but that's the trick. I mean, that was test conditions. I am a huge proponent of direct effects that don't involve process in the method. So <clears throat> we're going to deal at one point in this lecture with a very process heavy trick, a trick where you have to count down and remember something and put things on top. And I'm going to show you how I disguise that so that I can make peace with it. But I didn't want to hand him the deck and say, think of any number. Now add the two digits together, count down to that number and remember that card. Now take that card and put it either on the bottom or the top. That's not magic, that's math. If you could really do it, it would be cut anywhere you like, shuffle the cards, take anyone out and sit on it, and just do it. And that's what this is. Now, for the one million of you who will stick it out and do this trick, I'm so excited for you because you're going to have an absolute killer. Um, this is how the trick works because it's not just a one-way deck. You need a few other things. Um, Here's what you need. You need two sets of card reveals. So uh, there we are. These three cards are very important because the three cards that reveal the cards that the card that he sits on are not just an arbitrary choice. You don't just look them in the eye and say you picked the Queen of Diamonds because these cards will subtly prove that this deck is normal. Now the best way to prove this deck is normal is to have begun with many other tricks from a normal deck. But we're doing a live lecture so it makes a little more sense that you know you would just start with this trick and use this. The three cards I've chosen are also important. The reason I do three and not two is that I'll give you the scenario of one in a hundred times when you get some kind of a jerk who this is let's say the situation they go beneath the table with and you say span the cards out and take any card and they're just for some reason going to take a card that that isn't one of them and the, basically without going into all the permutations because it's boring um, you can get out of that by creating with the queen of diamonds and these three cards you can create the other cards okay so by getting creative with it it's a number card it's a red card it's a heart etc so these are the three cards one set goes on top, one set goes on the bottom. Now, the one other thing that you have to do, and the camera, if we get in really close, might be able to pick this up, is you need to punch these cards. Punching is a technique used by cheaters. Uh, they would take usually a pin. You can get a really expensive device for about $150 to punch these out, and it works actually worse than a safety pin. So, like, you take a little pin, and you need to not only be able to feel the difference between these cards and the face down cards, but you need to feel the difference between each other. Because as you saw, I'm going to look him in the eyes. So the red one is the first one you reveal that has one punch. So right in there, right between my fingers, if you could see it, is a punch. On the back, it means it's like a little piece of braille where, boop, I can just feel right in that corner a little raised mark. So you're not piercing the card, you're kind of puckering the card. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody when I'm marking cards and cutting cards and gaffing cards, I'm not very subtle. So I'm sure Jason England would be slapping my wrist because he'd say I, I did too obvious of a punch. But when I do any less than this, I sometimes miss it. And then that causes a real problem. When I do it this much, and you can feel one. Yeah, it's, well, I, I can't <clears throat> see it even from here. So yeah. I can feel so this it. one has two, and this one has three. All right. So you have that on top and on bottom. So the first part is simply a bluff. They get to cut anywhere they like, and they get to take either half because either half has everything you need, which is a one-way deck plus your force card. 
So he goes beneath the table. Now, you have about 26 cards here and three that you honestly would rather not have chosen. So I'm going to use my script to minimize the chance that they get chosen. Because honestly, if you tell them to shuffle beneath the table and they happen to centralize these cards, there's a really good chance, let's see if I do it, I, I won't do it on purpose, that when they go to pick one, yep, it happened, they get a bad one. So I will use my scripting to erase that. So they take this packet beneath the table like this, and they, I ask them to fan them out, pick out any card, and I gesture sort of from the middle, so nearly every time that's what they do, and I ask him to sit on it. And that's cool. I mean, it, it, you're already starting in a way no card trick they've ever seen starts. And now I say, and shuffle them again. So you've cut, you've shuffled, and you shuffled again. And in reinforcing that, it's as if maybe I forgot to say shuffle in the beginning, or they forgot to shuffle in the beginning, but it really makes it seem as if they're able to mix them. Now, most people are not very skilled at mixing beneath the table. Um, but the better they mix it, the better the trick. So Andy didn't mix it all that well, so all three of my indicator cards came together. Which has its own nice look to it. It looks like you're just grabbing any three cards. But ideally, as you'll see here, it'll look a little different. So now I take these cards and I stare right at the spectator. And that's always really cool. Okay, so let me just set this up so we get a good example here. So I'm going to look directly at the spectator the whole time, and what you do is you run your thumb up this corner so that you can feel. Now that's a no, so I deal down, and now I might fake it a few times. Oh, this feels like one. Hold on to that card for me. Mm, no, nah, not that one. And you really, you know, this is I, the part I worried about in the trick, because this is just the part where you're dealing through. But this is actually the really fun part of the trick. This is the part where everybody starts to gather around you. This one is going to mean something in a moment. And you're just going to go through the whole time until you hit all three of those cards and you put them away. Now, if you're working to do other tricks, these would have gone in your pocket when you chose the other packet, and these go in the pocket, and you can switch in any kind of deck you want. And now you don't know what order these are going to be in because of the shuffling, but the dots will tell you. So this tells me three, this tells me two, and this tells me one. It tells me su uh, color, suit, and value. And now the only little tip I'll give you here when you ask him to check is I, I really include doubt. I, of course I know it's the queen of diamonds, but I always act like I'm really curious. So red, diamond, queen should be the queen of... Queen of Diamonds, I guess, check. And I always look like I'm really curious. And it's funny, you know, even magicians, I notice, when I'm really curious and they turn it around, when they see it's the Queen of Diamonds, they always look back at me to see if, like, and I always act like, oh, wow. You know, and it just, I mean, it's just a killer. Um, uh, quick question on feeling for the bumps when you're going through. Are you identifying that one's three at that point? Or I'm trying to, yeah. Okay. A lot of the time, due to you know the simple way they shuffle and simple interlocking chains, they'll be in one, two, three order if you set them in one, two, three order. That's great. Thank you. I was totally fooled by that. All right, a little uh, more detail on the punching of the cards. This is the Braille system. Now that's it. So thank you so much, Joshua J, for teaching us signs. If you want to see more of Joshua J's work, link in the description below right now to a plethora of his releases and also his At The Table lectures. Now Josh has actually done a couple of At The Table lectures and this is his second one. Now this lecture is over one and a half hours long and you're going to learn seven effects, including his triad coins and his out of sight routine, which you saw at the beginning of this episode, plus how to memorize a deck, putting work into a deck and false shuffles. This lecture is honestly so good. There's so much good information on it. I loved every second of it. And honestly, the out of sight routine is oh, so, so good. And you can get all of this for just $9.95. There'll be a link in the description below to this lecture as well, where you can pick it up right now. Now, my friend, I know you're super busy, so I will let you get back to your Saturday. I'll see you on our Discord for our trivia games, giveaways, and even more. Link in the description below to that. Otherwise, I'll see you on Tuesday for a top five or on Wednesday for another What's New This Week. Now take care, see you later, bye for now. Whoa, hey, whoa, what's that? Oh, you should definitely check out that. Oh, there's so much good magic in there, you won't regret it. Hey, whoa, hey, look at this bad boy. You should definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe, then watch that. 
Oh, it's a good day to treat yourself.